What's up, hobby friends, and welcome to my video tutorial on how to paint Marvel Crisis Protocol's Scarlet Witch. I've got a list of all the colors and paints I've used up on the screen right now. If you want to give it a pause, check that out, note down all the colors that you want to be using for this tutorial. We can then dive right on into the painting of the actual model itself. So for the Scarlet Witch model, I've chosen to subassembly the figure as a separate component from the energy and the base itself. Now, um, I made the mistake of gluing the energy to the base. I would also normally subassembly both of them so that I can airbrush and paint the base separate from the energy. Realistically, all it's gonna mean is I'm gonna do the airbrushing on the base, mask it off, do the airbrushing on the energy, and then we'll be able to go back in by hand and put it all together. You'll also notice that I have a little sort of sub-assembly that I've used to work on finicky models that don't hold very well. What I mean by that is I can't just blue tack them to a base and have them stand securely. This is just a plastic card rod I've got glued into a base and I've got a blue tacked to Scarlet Witch. What this will mean is that the back of her boots will need some hand painting afterwards, but this will allow me to have the model sort of secured enough to do the airbrushing and then painting and then once we put the model together, glue it to the energy, we can go back in by hand and fix the back of the boots. You will notice that I did jump the gun before recording, I primed the model black. This is largely just to double check on the model so that the way the model is sculpted, not as big a deal on her legs, but her arms. So from the forearms, the elbow up to her chest and then across her chest, the actual figure is sculpted with a suit. So. The arms have folds and then there are folds and creases in the armpits as well as the elbow. I wanted to give the model a prime, see how much of those showed up, and then I knew where to go back in with a hobby knife and some sandpaper and just to clean it up and sand it down. So my goal with this is to paint the arms and the legs as bare skin. So I wanted to just make sure I check that with the primer or pre-primer before tweaking it and then going back in with more primer. So I'll go ahead and do another pass of Vallejo Surface Primer Black to protect the model, and then we'll dive right on in. As always, because I'm painting this for my own Marvel collection, I've already covered how I paint the base, so I'm not going to waste time in this video walking through the technique, but I will make sure to have links in the video description below. So if you want to find out how I painted the base, including the techniques and the color recipes, go ahead, check those links out. It'll be the exact same for all of my Marvel miniatures. We'll start with some airbrush prep. I'm gonna take some AK graphite and apply a base coat to the khaki stone. You can do this by hand. I'm just a little lazy, so I'm choosing to airbrush this step. I'm also gonna go in with a 50-50 mix of fluorescent magenta and fuchsia, and I'm going to airbrush the energy coil for the model itself. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have gone with a gray or white primer. This would have helped me to base coat the pink fuchsia mix a lot more easily. The fluorescent is fairly diluted and it made base coating fairly difficult. So I ended up doing a lot of passes on the dark primer. I'm going to go in by hand, starting with the fluorescent magenta and fuchsia and mixing in a bit of pastel yellow for the first base coat. And I'm going to start painting the energy swirls. Now for this, I'm more or less just applying a, a base coat over all of the energy elements without caring too much about the individual patterns to start. What I want to do is just start to build up that base tone and start to think about where I want the energy to focus. And then as I highlight up and as I'm focusing some of the brighter highlights, I'll add more and more of that pastel yellow. The way I'm putting, placing the lights and shadows on this first is to create an interesting pattern over the surface of the energy. But I'm also trying to think about where energy is going to be concentrating from the model. So in this instance, I'm thinking about where Scarlet Witch's foot comes into contact will be a brighter spot, where her two hands center in on those little energy circle portions will also be bright spots. And then what I wanna do is undulate from a bright to a darker, a mid-tone section to a bright. So where the energy swirls hit a corner, I imagine I'll get a flare of energy, it'll be a little brighter. And then in the longer segments, it might go a little bit darker. Similarly, where the energy coils and wraps behind the Scarlet Witch figure itself, it might be a little bit darker compared to some of the more forward elements. The actual sculpt for this energy is fairly nebulous. There's not a lot of clearly defined 
crevices or recesses or corners that you can actually define as shadows. So I found this to be a particularly challenging part of the model where you actually have to think about and create your own pattern. It's a little bit more freeform and it's kind of liberating, but also it can be a little daunting at the same time. And this is what I ended up with after all of my highlighting. So you can see that at the lower portion where Scarlet Witch steps is one of the brighter parts. And then the two circles up top where her hands fit through are also fairly bright. I'm then going to go in with the airbrush and the 50-50 mix of that magenta fuchsia base coat. And with the airbrush, I'm going to start glazing in to smooth out the, the patterning and then bring back some of those deeper shadows. So the mix of my airbrush is fairly diluted. I would say um, five parts water to one part paint. And then with a fairly low PSI, all we're doing is we're doing um, very thin layers and then using the airbrush to air dry before applying the next layer. So essentially we're doing a glaze with the airbrush. You can do this by hand. I just find it easier with the airbrush itself. With the burnt red, I'm going to apply a base coat over all of the red on the Scarlet Witch. The next highlight step for the airbrush, I'm going to be using Carmine. And I'm focusing this on the highlighted surfaces of the model. So I'm just taking some time and carefully using the airbrush to apply a couple of highlight spots. The step from burnt red to Carmine is fairly soft, so there's no reason to overdo it. And then by hand, I'm going to go back in with Carmine and start to reinforce those mid-tone highlights. I found that when you're using the airbrush, it doesn't always give the same kind of finish that a hand-painted base coat or highlight would give. So once I've done the airbrush with the Carmine, I want to go back in by hand and just pick out some of those highlights with that Carmine, get a stronger base coat down. And I can also start focusing on some of the more pronounced folds in the body. From there, I'm going to go in with Vallejo Fireflame and start to create my highlights. Now from Carmine to Fireflame is also a very soft transition step in terms of the value, but you still also want to make sure that you're diluting your color. And with a nice diluted layer, you can sort of build up that tone. I also want the detailing on the, especially the corset or the bodice of the piece to be fairly soft and fairly subtle. So especially when it comes to defining the, the creases and the seam lines on the suit, I actually didn't go heavy on the shadow tones and I kept the highlighting fairly soft so that it wasn't a super sharp, super um, dark edge, but something that's much more softer and much more feminine. From there, I'm going to start mixing in dead red into the fire flame to create my highlights. Now you want to be careful by using too much dead red. You may end up with too pink of a color tone and it'll end up being too similar to the energy elements. So it's a, a very fine balance between the mix of the two. You want just enough dead red to brighten up the highlight and bring it into this sort of um, pale pastel color tone without going too pink where it's too similar to the energy. And then finally, with the airbrushing, I'm going to start to nuance the piece. First, with a 50-50 mix of the Carmine Burnt Red. And I'm targeting the midtones with this. This is largely to smooth out the blends and help to soften the transitions where my highlighting may have been a little bit sharp. And then I'm going to start to darken the shadows. First, with reddish black, I'm targeting the deep shadows, particularly behind the model, and then especially on the underside where the folds of the cape are. Because I started with a base coat of the burnt red, it is fairly bright, and I want to start darkening it a bit. I'm then going to go in with some Games Workshop Drifty Violet Shade and do the exact same thing, targeting the deepest shadows, particularly on the underside where the cape is, and then on the back of the model. With the Drifty Violet, I have this loaded pure into the airbrush, and I'm doing very soft, very thin layers, spraying a little bit, and then using the airbrush to air dry so that I'm not spidering the color over the entire model. For the skin, I'm going to start with a base coat of base flush and target all of the legs, shoulders, and the chest, making sure to not overpaint onto any of the red suit. The highlight, I'm going to start mixing in some beige red. And for this, because I'm going for a fairly pale skin tone, I'm going to go fairly bright into the beige red, I think, um, all the way up to beige red. So what I found to help is first starting with a very rough blocking of pure beige red, figure out where the brightest point will be 
and then going back and mixing in a little bit of that base flesh, dilute the paint a little bit, and then you can sort of feather and glaze out your, your highlights and smooth out back into your base coat. You can see here what I'm doing is I first targeted with a very strong highlight of the beige red, and I'm going in with mixes of the base flush and beige red and glazing over the transition steps to create a smoother blend. From pure beige red, I'm gonna start mixing in light flush and we're gonna do the exact same thing, working our way up. Lots of thin layers, lots of tiny brush strokes to help create smooth transitions. When you're painting female skin, you wanna make sure that you don't have too harsh of a shadow. You want your transitions and your highlights to be soft and to create a more feminine feel. The more defined you make your shadows, the harsher you make that transition between your darks, your mids, and your brights, the more masculine it will end up being. That isn't to say that you can't have these sharp jumps, you just want to use them very, very carefully and very sparingly. For example, here in the chest where I have the breasts, I go for a bit more of a darker jump between the brights and the darks. I'm then going to go in with some Vallejo Game Airs Scarlet Red, and I'm going to start targeting the mid-tones and the shadow tones, bring back a bit of rosiness into the skin. And where it does overspray into the red, it's soft enough that it's not going to make too huge of an impact. But I am using my 0.2 millimeter needle and I'm trying to focus this mainly in the skin in areas where you're going to see that rosiness, that redness of the blood flow. So we're looking at the knees, the sides and backs of the thighs, the elbows and underneath the armpits. I'll do the same thing with Gucci Violet, targeting those, those shadowed areas. Um, the purple will add a bit more of a cool tone. So targeting the deeper shadows and the, especially the back of the model with this is a great way to add that nuance and add that greater depth to the skin. I'm using both the Scarlet Red and the Gucci Violet Pure in the airbrush. They're both soft enough that if you don't overspray, you just do little bits of color, little bursts, and then you air dry you can gradually control and build up the color. Based with the hair, I'm gonna use a 50-50 mix of leather brown and tenebrous gray, taking care again not to overpaint onto the red. You wanna make sure that you get underneath the hair as well and you get a nice even base coat. From there, I'm gonna use leather brown and start with the highlighting. For my first few highlight steps, I'm gonna largely ignore the individual strands, especially in the front, and just target the general form and the volume. The highlight, I'm going to use World War I French Brown. And by keeping the paint nice and diluted, I can build up a couple of thin layers using the exact same color and gradually increase the strength and intensity of the highlight. So with the French Brown, as I'm highlighting, and then especially in the front, I'm going to start to define individual strands. And then when it gets to the back of the hair, because it does get kind of flat in terms of the detailing, kind of just freehand in individual strands where I find it. And I'll do the same thing with the orange brown, focusing mainly on the front, on the forehead, on the sides of the head, and then underneath where it folds around to get the brightest highlights on the front. I'm going for the MCU film color palette for hair, which is a uh, dirty blonde, almost brown color tone and not blonde like the comic art or the art art. So. Don't go too heavy on this highlighting. And then to shade, I'm using Gucci Violet, targeting the mid and shadow tones, just like in all the previous steps with the red and the skin. This will help to soften all the transitions and then really just add that extra punch and deepen up the shadows. Take the eyes, I'm gonna start with a base coat of tenor spray and I'm gonna fill in the socket. You wanna be very careful with this step not to overpaint on any of the skin. And then to paint the whites of the eyes, I'm going to use an off-white, so white, white sands from scale 75. And for this, I'm doing two dots for either side of the pupil, but you could just do a white dot filling the entire eye socket and then do tenebrous gray to do a black dot to finish off with the pupil. And then finally, to finish off the model, I'm going to apply some weathering powders. I'm targeting the crevices where the khaki and the terracotta sidewalk pavement stone meets, and then where we have cracks in the khaki stone, I'm gonna add a little bit of weathering there, making sure not to get any on the, uh, the pink OSL coming off of the energy elements. You wanna make sure that you're using a 
dry brush for this and then apply it in small incremental amounts. It's much easier to add more and build up the color than it is to try and take it away. And then once I'm happy with the effect, I'm gonna use some mineral spirits in a spritzer bottle and I'm just gonna liberally saturate the base. This will help to fix the pigment powders. And once that's dry, it takes about 45 minutes to an hour. I can apply my varnish of choice because this is a gleaming piece. I'm using Mr. Hobby's Super Clear, which is a nice matte varnish. We can paint the base trim black and then our Scarlet Witch model is complete. So that's it for this video. It's a fairly simple model, I think. A bit finicky when it comes to painting the energy and then handling the actual figure itself. I ended up taking it off of the sub-assembly and just having a latex glove holding the figure not to rub finger oils onto the piece as I was wrapping up, especially painting the skin, the hair, and the eyes. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more awesome weekly content. If you want to check out my other social media platforms, I'll make sure to have links in the video description below. As always, until next time, happy hobbying.